Professor Melly Mayo, the Hood Post man. I'm back here with Bright Dog. He got that Compton versus the world. What does that mean, man? That means don't have a defeatist attitude. It means if you have the mind frame of it's me against the world because I'm from Compton and I represent Compton, it's Compton against the world. You could never be defeated because off the top, you didn't got rid of that attitude. I say we got a guest sitting next to you. Would you like to introduce her? We have my oldest daughter, my beautiful daughter, Trinika, my firstborn. A.K.A. Trey. A.K.A. Trey. Look at her. <laughs> so let's get right into it. 18 years your dad was out of your life. And um, how old were you at that time before he left? It was four months after my 21st birthday. Four months. Four months. And a quick story about my 21st birthday, my best friend at the time blindfolded me. And it was like, we're going somewhere. And then I just sat in the car. She walked me in. And when I took the blindfold off, my father was standing there with my birthday cake. Oh, that's an awesome yeah. story. Cool. So yeah. you were 21. He was taken away from you from 18. But prior to that, what was you guys' relationship? Oh, wow. It's a long, it, it, those 21 years, a lot happened and transpired in 21 years. But recent, at that time, I was in college for ultrasound, and I just got out of the military. And what branch? Army. Army. Yes. Yes, sir. How many years? Um, I signed up for three, but three. I got injured, so I did, I did two years and eight months. Okay. Two years and eight months. So prior to that, my father and I have always been really close. Like, I have always had this, like, innate connection with my dad and looked up to my father. But just like, I don't know, being around my father I always felt safe, loved, you know, and I was very protective. I still am. He has a nickname for me. Yeah, I call her Jim for Green Eye Monster. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> out of all my children, she's the my, my, my. So she's my Green Eye Monster. Okay. You know, so I call her Jim, G E M. Yeah. That's if you hear my phone, it says Jim. Okay. You know? So, Trey, I noticed you have some interesting jury on. Talk to me about that. Okay. Well, um, definitely into healing, natural healing, crystals, and different properties like that. But this is interesting, too, because this is my aunt, mm -hmm. right, which represents eternal life, 306 degrees of life. But I always tell people the first time I ever saw an aunt symbol was on my father. <laughs> And I didn't know what it was when I was a little girl. But see, when I would be with my dad and my dad would like come in, I, well, the way I vividly remember is my dad would make my food, give me food, and I would see it. I would see the tattoo. And it's on his wrist. Okay. So when he would bring the food to the table, it was so prominent. It was right there. But I didn't know what it so was. So you remembered it? I remember. I remember the symbol, actually. So at some point you became curious and you wanted the knowledge. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what was that like? It was enlightening because prior to, outside of my father, so much religion was pushed growing up. You know what I mean? It was like the cross. It was Christianity, so forth and so forth. So this symbol resonated with me more than anything. And I got caught up into symbolism in um, this language arts class I was in in high school. But once I actually researched the symbol and I saw it, it was like, this was speaking to me. This is my culture. This is my ancestors' culture. And it meant so much more than just a symbol. Like, you know, that the actual meaning and the, the, the energy that comes from it. So, I don't know. I, I always tell people that. That was the first time I ever saw aunt was on my father. So your father was conscious. He was um, very caring and, and, and taking care of his children. How did he manage all that? Being that he was just gang banger, he was just bank robber, he was just just drug. He had a lot of stuff going. Did he like keep you, that away from you guys? You guys didn't have an idea of any of this. When I was growing up, I didn't. Um, my dad would come pick me up. We would go to Carver Park. I would just run and play. It'd be me and my dad. I'll go run and play around. I remember all this stuff. You know, I remember, um, and I don't know if I'm mistaken, but the memory of after I went to D.C. and, and they had the truce. Right. And my dad took me. It was the Million Man March? 
No, the truth, the no, 90s. The truth. The okay. Like okay. The truth. Okay. Okay. The okay. Truth. Everybody yeah. was up there. My, it was me and my dad. We pulled up. Yeah, do you, do you remember correctly? I remember. Yeah. I have a really good memory. She and remember correctly. <laughs> Man, he took your daughter to the truth. I guess it was it was cool because and at that time everybody was like, chill. And still had about five burgers. So. Yeah, it didn't. <laughs> even before that, I was always pulling up like with my father, you know. And again, mm -hmm. I didn't know. I was very aware, um, so I wasn't ignorant to stuff. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really know the stories, stories about my father until I got older. So when you found out the stories, what was that like? Tell us what that looked like when you actually <laughs> found out. With Bry Dog, Bry D, and all these, this man got yeah, four different names. Yeah, Bones. Let me, yeah, another story. When you said Michael Westbrook? Yeah. Willie Westbrook, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Westbrook, sir. Right, so <laughs> my father brings me to the, the Carmelito. Yeah. And he entered his, he was going to visit his friend, and his son came out. And I'm like, I go to school with this guy, right? So, oh, lo and behold, this is how I knew, right? I get to school the next day and I'm coming out of the science building. But before we came out, I, we had a class where he saw me in the hallways. And he just would stop everybody. Get out the way. You know who daughter this is? This is right off daughter. Move, cuz. Like, you know what I mean? And I was so So how did you feel hearing that? I was embarrassed. Because uh -huh. I was very shy. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I was pretty reserved, you know. What's I'm your like, birth sign? I'm a Leo. Okay, I can see you being shy. Go ahead, continue. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little... I had my moments. And I was really young. I was very shy then. So I was just like, oh my God. But I never forgot that. And that's how I really like initially started to know. And then later on, outside of the whole situation, the big Crosby situation, how all that went, it really wasn't like me knowing the stories was when Dee passed away. Right. And so all our family came together. And I never told my dad this because they were like, don't tell your dad. <laughs> so I'm not snitching. But so they were all having stories. My youngest uncle, rest in peace, my uncle Elijah, my uncle Emu, he and my aunt and um, my brother and my girl, we were all just there and they were telling all the stories. They was like, oh, Emu, well, dog was crazy. Like he liked to have a shootout. It's like he, he made him. So are you sitting like, who is this <laughs> Wait, person? Can I say all that? <laughs> So it's like, who is this person they talking about? Right, so I'm sitting there, right? I'm I'm like happy to be with my family, but it was a it was a dark situation, you know. But I'm like I'm listening to all this, so the war it went on, and and my sister don't tell you that he said, and I just walked off. How did it make you feel? I mean, I respect my. I always knew my father wasn't no like, you know, Poindexter. I mean, very intelligent, but I knew he wasn't. You know what I mean in that life. I knew that, but I never heard the stories of like shootouts and him being excited while doing it. Like I was like, I mean, you know. I, Were you I, like this point? Who is this man? No, because I like I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's hard. Like I know my father. She, she knew the duality. Of right. Him. Right, to right, a certain degree. right, right. We are separated, but she knew. Yeah, I knew, and plus my great uncle told me stories about him. A story. <laughs> my my great uncle Hardy is like, your mama got with the craziest week in Compton, and I'm like, <laughs> mm -hmm. and my mom was really shy, schoolgirl, you know. So I'm like, what do you mean? He used to jump over the wall shooting at people in um in junior high or something crazy like that. Yeah. That he was saying. He was a panther, but then my dad explained that we're in the leathers. Yeah. Remember you wrote yeah. that down to me? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's good. That's interesting that he was able to explain it to you through his letters and everything. That's, oh, yeah. We had emails, letters. How powerful was that? The letters and communication. Mm -hmm. It was very, it meant a lot to me. I was frustrated with my dad for a lot of things. Like, one thing my father would always let me know when I felt comfortable was to express myself freely with him. We were a lot alike in our expression with writing. You know, he's like, oh my God, it's like I'm reading my own words. And I would feel the same when I would read his words. But I was able to let out my frustrations. But I'm, honestly, I feared for my father being in there. And I felt that if I lost my dad, I would die. Mm -hmm. That understand was scary that. to hold that. on all those years. Uh, were you 39 when you went in? 38. 30, 38. 30, yeah. You just, and I was 38. Well, turned in 38 when my father came home. Hmm, interesting. I was 39 this year. 
So that's a huge gap. So when did you start embracing the healing? You talked about healing and spirituality. So what made you move towards that oh, understanding? Wow. That's deep. I've, I've, um, I lost my, my auntie in 2009, Mom Gracie. And ironically, she passed away on Easter. So I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't hard into religion. But that day... Quick question before you go on. How do you think that Christianity... Ha has it been good for our people or harmful? Your opinion. I believe very harmful. Okay, uh, go ahead. Anytime you create the image of God that, that does not look like you, what else do you see yourself as? Mm. The melanated people that is indigenous to this land, I believe we're indigenous to this land. We should be, you know, we're be beyond the scope of a man-made religion. And everything that we know about religion came from the slave master. So therefore, I don't think it should be something that we trust. But talk about your spirituality. We don't want to get too much no, in that religion. Go well, no. you can go in. If no, that's no, what you go want to in, be, because we'll be go in. Because <laughs> I can go. go I, yeah, but I'll go back into my personal journey again mm -hmm. with my dad. I remember my grandmother and I, we went to visit my father. And they had the trailer visit. Yeah. And I was about 16. And my dad, we chill and my dad cooked for me. And they had a Bible. He's morning. cooked for us today, didn't he? Did you, did yes, you cook for us today? To yes, I did. What did you cook? I cooked chicken quarters and uh, green beans and chicken rice. Look at that. Awesome. So finished tray. Yeah, so there was a dresser and had a Bible. We chill and watch the TV and, you know, on the couch. And my grandma was in the room just giving us our space. You know what I mean? And he just ripped the page off. And he, he really observed my reaction, my physical reaction to this. And I was like, and he said, does that offend you? Do you have a problem with that? And I didn't, I was stuck, but I'm, I've never seen anyone do anything like that. And my father let me, you know, he broke certain things down. He said, this is a book, this is paper. And he was talking about the contradictions that was in that book. And for me to not pretty much, I would guess like cling to this as far you know as people kind of worship it and see it and then my dad always he said listen as my children i will sit every single religious book or school of thought book in front of you and you choose read from them you know and i i don't know many people that are like that they he was to teaching you not to be limited yeah yeah I, absolutely and i mean again all these things ties into my growth growing is from a young girl to a young lady to a woman to have an open mind hopefully that growth don't, it don't depend on you grabbing pistols and jumping over fences I and stuff. <laughs> hey, she didn't say she lucky i don't have a gun i'll be just like you because seems to me that he taught you a lot of things but hopefully he helped that back now hold on when i was in the military i got a sharpshoot i got 39 out of 40. oh the sure. highest on my battalion i call him you know how we get calls and stuff like limited phone time, and my father was like, "Well, you got that from me." I was like, "Oh my goodness!" He just patted himself on the yeah, back. Yeah, I got everything, yeah. right? Everything from him. But I do have so many traits and qualities of my father, mm -hmm. which I'm grateful mm -hmm. for. But mm -hmm. going into my whole journey from my auntie, you know, transitioning, we had a um, a native ritual burial. So my mother's family is from Alaska or from the Aleutian Islands or mm -hmm. Inuit, right? Native. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother called my Uncle Bob and a few more people over who were in Seattle. So they came from different tribes. These aren't her blood brothers, but she grew up with these, these people. So they're family. And I remember coming downstairs and they were all, and they were like, oh my God, this is your beautiful granddaughter. And, I hadn't met them yet because I didn't meet my mother's side of the family until I was 22 years old. So um, they pulled out the sage, sweet grass. And my grandmother would always have a braided sweet grass above her, you know, above the couch. Every morning she burned and drank her coffee. And she also kept telling Did you coffee. question it, <laughs> the reasoning to her doing this? I didn't. With the, with the sweet grass, mm -hmm. I didn't initially, right? 
So when my when they came, they brought in all the herbs. They brought actual cedar off trees that they collected mm -hmm. because my uncle Bob started to um, explain to us that once the body actually, or excuse me, the spirit or soul leaves the body, it has to travel on to go to the next dimension or next realm, spiritual realm. It's a continuance. Yes. But he explained so much to us as far as keeping a fire going for seven days. The ritual exists because it takes that time for them to actually cross over. But he helps guide them because he says it's so abrupt when the spirit leaves the body that it's confused. Because you're still, you know, your consciousness and it's confused because it is pretty fast. But the fire kind of keep, keeps them back home so they don't warm off and then you feed the fire. I can only imagine because there's so many people that's walking around that's lost in confusion. I can only imagine when you leave the body what that consists of. Yeah, it says it's a really big shock and they grieve too because they miss you. That doesn't go away. Just like how I feel, I'm always going to be connected to my ancestors. So they're still connected, you know, but they need to kind of come to an acceptance. Mm -hmm. So um, we feed the fire. Their favorite foods, just like putting out offerings at your altar or you know whatever that you choose to do food water um but that was the first time they came out with the big old bundles and we were sitting on the couch right and my grandma's right here i had never smudged prior to this and they came with it and me seeing stuff on tv i'm thinking i'm gonna smoke this right so i got it and my grandma they were, my grandma was like no 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 it's like you don't smoke and they're like, oh, you're really your grandmother's child, right? But then they show me how to properly smudge. And how okay. literally when you do start where the smoke goes, that's the area where the negative energy is. It, explain you. smudge. Explain it. So you can, smudging is kind of clearing energy, right? Clearing what the, the negatives negative, do. But it clears all. It's not just the, the negative energy out there. Some people, it kind of just clears the entire space. But when you have something like a Palo Santo, it'll it'll can or promote the positive. Interesting that you say that because something has to fill the space, whether it's negative or positive energy. But the space itself has to be filled. Absolutely. Okay. I agree. Now, let me ask you this: that he's gonna ask. So, in your journey, you did diverse, not in a negative way, but in consciousness to the new Black Panther Party, correct? Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I was getting there. You mm -hmm. stole my thunder. No, <laughs> go ahead. No, 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 no. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, I, I did. So after this, with this whole ceremony on burying my, you know, our physical body, but helping her cross over, it opened my eyes to more than what I had seen prior. And it felt right to me. And ironically, my family that was there that grew up in this, when they came around with it, they were like, oh, no, I believe in Jesus. So I was the only one, along with my grandmother and my uncles, who came down from the reservation. Jesus didn't create nothing, and we created himself. <laughs> yeah. So I don't like, know where they get that from, but they okay. Know, they can find nothing from this, but not even the sandals. <laughs> so talk to me about the new Black Panther Party. What was that? Oh about? my goodness. So okay, first of all, when I when I came in, which opened my mind as far as my father saying that there's these different, you know, schools of thoughts. When I came in, I didn't want to be kind of put in a box. As far as this is what I am, this is what I am. So I did go through different schools of thought. But the way I met members from the um, New Black Panther Party was through a center called Karas Unity Center of African, African Spiritual Science in Los Angeles, which I feel everyone should sh um, check them out. They're on Western in, I don't know, 72nd. I, I'm not good with LA. But so I came across a few of the brothers. They were passing out things. And I always loved the Black Panthers growing up. One thing I can say, I used to read The Final Call when I was a kid. I would have people like get it for me. Um, of course, when I saw the Black Panther movie, I just, I always had like a revolutionary <laughs> spirit, you know? Absolutely. Because I, mean? I knew who I was as a, as a young black girl. And even coming to my, my Nana's house and my dad's mom's house, every, you're going to know, just like here, when you walk in, this is who you are. You know what I mean? So I, that was just in me. It was in my spirit. But I met them. And the only, I didn't join, I didn't, you know, but I collaborated with them. Like I intermingled and got mm -hmm. to know them as, you know, some of my brothers and sisters because I respect what they were doing and I always looked up to the movement of the Panthers. I, I, I don't even know if people realize 
the programs that they did, how it's still carried on today for us. Man, that's awesome. Because it's, it's this culture conditioning and nothing lands better than to be culture conditioned by the people that which you look at every day and those people are are moving in that spirit and, and they give you something outside of what other people has denied you. You know what I mean? They bring it forward. They give it to you raw and uncut. And a lot of times people are not quite accepting because of, of the indoctrination of religion and they can't get past that. You know, it's like a wall or being caught in the jaw of an alligator or something and they can't move one way or the other because of this religious stuff and they fear and, you know, God is going to strike me down and I'm going to burn in hell, you know what I mean? Which none of us know anything about any of this stuff. So it's, it's always amazing to me how people think along those lines. But Can I speak a little bit to that? Sure. It's absolute bondage. If you bind someone's mind and their soul, then what is left? I feel like we're, spirit, we're limited anyway being in a physical body, you know? But to bind, it's absolute bondage. And fear. Why would I want to serve a fear in God? Why would I want to serve a jealous entity? Those are limitations. Those those things create fear within you, right? And fear is very detrimental. Or very detrimental. So I don't wanna I don't want to deal with anything that's going to tell me fear me. In order, if you don't do this, this is going to happen. Shouldn't mm -hmm. this person love you? So love is the strongest force. So I, I, I just can't get with that. I can't. Cool. Look at the word word. Religion means to bind, to hold back. It does. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> That's the so I mean, right on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How impressed have you been with your children? Since being back home, you was gone 18 years. You was out of their life. Now that you get to see them in adulthood, What's your impression? Well, the first thing is humbleness and gratefulness. I'm grateful to that in which I believe in that, that my children basically uh, follow the path of uh, righteousness because no matter what your theological belief is, you're going to have to walk a righteous path or a wicked path when you cut through all the chase. And I'm in admiration of my children from my eldest to my youngest. What's your eldest? And what's your youngest? This is my, my daughters. Well, no, my son Malik. My daughter Trinita and my son Malik. Her age now? She's 39, shortly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my your youngest, youngest? He was born in 95, so that would make him 26, shortly. All right, and he's training to be a USDA. His brother's training to be a USDA. My other son is career military. My youngest daughter's about to go into nursing school. So how many kids in all? I have seven children, biological, but I have nine children because I have two boys that I've raised since they were at Pampers. And there, another one's about to become a USDA, and Sherrod is finding his way, but he's a responsible father to his children, and he's married. So somebody that the uh, government, so-called United Snakes of America, I'm saying United Snakes, yes. not the United Streets, but United Snakes, they have demonized you and they have called you probably a career criminal. True. But yet you achieve so much greatness through your children. Well, like my daughter spoke on earlier, this is why I love writing letters to my children. I can say to you right now, hey man, let's go to the store and we're going to buy the store. And it can go in your mind and out of your mind. But I can write you a letter and say, hey, man, let's go to the store. We're going to buy that store. This is how we're going to buy it. You can reread that letter, reread that letter, and manifest it into a realistic yes. thing. It becomes physical. But saying it to you, it can go off the earlobe. It can go in the earlobe, out the earlobe. Or it or can it even can be smirked. selective selective in the hearing or right. misinterpreted. So I feel like, like with my sons, I used to write them letters because, you know, I'm not biased, but... Young African American males go through more than sisters do growing up. So I used to write my son's letters called In the Event of. In the event of you encountered this. In the event of you encountered that. 
This is how you approach the situation. So that was preparation. It was preparation. I Proper letters. preparation is, prevents poor performance. Right. This is what Berkeley men do. You open doors for women. You don't hit women. What is a Berkeley chair. man? A Berkeley man is, well, I'm a Berkeley. That's what I say, and that's what we that's ingrained in us. Like, let's take a gang. You can say, in gang membership, when you're ingrained with something, you're ingrained with I'm from Carver Park. So when a dude asks me where you from, I'm like, I'm from Carver Park, why I was happening. But it's the why it was happening on the end. So with I'm a Berkeley, it was ingrained from us that you come from greatness. You come from overcoming obstacles. You come from an uncle who built the port of Oakland up to world class status, who did architectural design in San Francisco in the National Airport, who started the Oakland Post. You come from a grandfather who, as a pool shark, put his brothers through college. You come from a father who was an entrepreneur. You come from Palm Lane squabbers, those the Berkeley boys. And so you inherited a, I'm a Berkeley with aggression. So that's why Queen Jean, she be so. Up on the Berkeley, because I talked to Queen Jean, which is your first cousin. Yeah. You know, yeah. the G. Lou, so shout out to G. Lou, shout out to Queen yeah. Jean. And even when our women have different last names through marriage or what have nots, is I'm a Berkeley. So dude can be mad. She can be Trinica Latrice Hardy, Shamika Jones Johnson, Berkeley. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That point. And when them kids come through, Berkeley, Berkeley. you a Berkeley. My mother hates it because she's <laughs> Reeves. And when my son's born, she's like, I'm talking about I'm a Berkeley. But you know, that's what it is with Berkeley. So Berkeley's entail so much. We have city controllers, lawyers, bank robbers, drug addicts, gang bangers. You got a table full of different people from various so walks of life. You know, so I'm a Berkeley. Okay. We're going to leave it right there, man. Shout out to the Berkeleys. The whole lot of the Berkeleys, man. It sounds like, man, like a thousand of y'all. Probably is. All <laughs> BS to the side. Well, Professor Melly Mill, the Hood Post, man, you know the vibe. I'm here with Trey, and I'm here with Brian. Look at them. All that, all that love. All that love, man. There it is, man. And we are out. Would you like to say anything going out? I'm going to say, man, this is basically, man, uh, don't have a defeatist attitude. This applies to all of Los Angeles County. This applies nationwide to every urban area. Yes, I'm from Compton, but they do the same thing everywhere, man. Shout it's out. against the world. Shout out. Absolutely. What about you, Trey? What you got? I would like to say don't have a closed off mind. Don't limit yourself by closing yourself off mentally. And, and greatness great. do come from confidence. Oh, absolutely. All the time. Look at that man's shirt. Absolutely. All the time. Y'all see it. Greatness do come from confidence, man. No and let y'all know this, man. Compton is its own entity. It is its own place. We do not need the support of anything outside of that. We got everything. We're close proximity to the beach, close proximity of airport, close proximity of downtown LA. Well, that's why we call the hub because we are in the center of things and man we make the crowd move professor melly mel the hood post man you know the vibe we're out